Hello everyone and welcome to another StarCraft 2 commentary with EXO and today I'm going to be bringing you a game from the TSL qualifiers quarterfinals between uh, Naiden spawning as the blue Protoss at the 12 o'clock position and Kiwi Kaki spawning as the yellow Protoss at the 2 o'clock position so um, it is going to be a Protoss versus Protoss this time on Scrap Station and um, uh, by the way, I just uh, want to say a few things about these players for the people who not who don't really know who they are. Uh, Kikaki's plan uh, is part of the um, of Clan Root from the North American uh, North American realms, and um, Clan Root is a very good clan with a lot of good players in it. Druby is in it, Katz is in it, QXC is in it, Slush is in it. So uh, a lot of good players for uh, for that clan and. Um, Kibikaki has been having great results lately, he's been winning a lot, he's had one of the s most solid playstyles, I think, one of the most solid gameplay uh, of all the Protoss I've seen uh, in the latest uh, period. He also has had a lot of great gameplay with Mothership, I've seen a lot of games with him where he uses Mothership and he is, well, pretty much destroying his opponents with it, he's found a way to actually include his... Um, to include Mothership in this build order and stuff like this, so that's really great to see uh, the fact that players are finding new ways to integrate things like Mothership, uh, you know, tech units that really haven't been used so far because uh, people, you know, really said, ah, it's ineffective, it's not feasible, and so forth. And as for Night End, he is a player from Romania, he's a very good player, he's number one in this division right now, he's about 3,500 3, uh, points in Masters League, and um, so uh, he's uh, part of the clan Praetorians right now, he's been part of NTW for a very long time, so another very, very good player over here, obviously making it to the, the, sem to the um, what's it called, uh, quarterfinals here in the TSL Open. And uh, taking a look at what's happening in the game, looks like Naiden only went for one gas, same with Kikaki. Um, Kikaki has scouted Naiden out, and I think Naiden has uh, scouted, uh, yep, there we go, oops, and the camera needs to be centered, there we go. So, um, both players really scouting each other out, attacking this pylon, uh, both players doing <laughs> really the same thing right now. Opening with um, pretty much standard, uh, Naiden's cybercore is done a little bit before Kikaki's cybercore, so that's pretty much it, other than that. The the uh, the opening is pretty standard. Both of them are chrono boosting the warp gate research, and obviously both of them can see this as the probe is still in their base, not getting any stock. Oh, actually, Nightend is getting one stalker out to deny scouting from that probe, while Kikaki is not getting anything, and Night End is really f scouting freely right now inside Kikaki's base, and you can see the warp gates being laid down, and this is <coughs> oh actually four gates. So Kikaki actually wants to let Naiden know that this is going to be a 4k play and uh, Naiden doing exactly the same thing as well but Kiwikaki unable to scout this um, as his probe did leave but Kiwikaki is pl planting down a proxy pylon over here looks like Naiden's probe is going to be returning home and it is probably going to see, let's see it's just outside, no I think he did see it did he see it, did he see it um, yep he did see that um, uh, proxy pylon over there so Let's see, is he actually gonna go do anything about it? And uh, meantime, so, <coughs> looks like there's nothing really spectacular going on in this game. Looks like it's going to be a 4-gate versus 4-gate, and this is gonna be pretty intense. Um, this will be a lot of units uh, coming from both these players, and look at the uh, timing on the warp gates. It's done at the exact same time for both players, and the warp gates are being uh, morphed right now. Let's see how Naiden is going to be able to hold this off. There we go, first units from Kikaki have made their way over here. But Naiden has superior forces for now. He's going to take down that pylon, good choice over there. Stopping reinforcements for now, but there's another proxy pylon a bit further back. That's all going down, and looks like Naiden has the advantage, the unit advantage at least. And um, let's see, is Kikaki going to be insistent with this push, or is he going to back off? I think he's going to back off. Uh, or he will just try and keep the pressure on, I'm not exactly sure, but the thing is, Naiden does have a superior army count right now, if you take a look at the unit counting station, 7 stalkers over 5, 7 stalkers and a zealot over 5 stalkers of, uh, of Kikaki, so, don't think that Naiden is in any sort of immediate danger right now, and uh, I'm curious to see when these players will decide to expand, and how long they will stay on one base. And um, here we go, Naiden doing some more, trying to ward these forces away, trying to take down that proxy pylon, Yep, he's probably gonna engage here, there we go, he's committing to this attack and um, taking down quite a few units, Stalker's going down, Zealot's going down as well and there we go, and he's probably going to take down that pylon, yep, there we go, pylon going down and uh, yeah, 
Kirikaki forced to go back home and uh, Kirikaki really has to think about maybe expanding at this point uh, they do have to expand obviously uh, you want to expand in a position where you're more favored to do so right now Kirikaki just lost uh, just lost some units in that engagement he's not really um, sitting on, a, on any advantage so he's not really so keen uh, so keen to uh, expand but here we go night end is gonna try another push again but uh, don't think there's any reason for him to do this he doesn't even have a proxy pylon to uh, to bring reinforcements and uh, I think he's just going to back off right now and here we go night end is getting a robotics facility while Kiwikaki is not getting anything right now so um, let's see what is this going to be if this is going to be an immortal that's going to be really great and we might just see some war prism play over here he might just get a war prism and start warping in units at the at the edge over there and also dropping some of his existing units can low like four stalkers in that or just get the immortals and drop them off and then um, warp in stalkers on the ledge over there so yeah let's see what um, what Night End is thinking right now? Uh, none of the players expanding yet. This is uh, it's a it's been a very long time actually since they've been on one base. Uh, al almost nine minutes over there, and Kyukaki is getting a robo facility himself. But the observer is on the way for Night End already rallied to um, to uh, to the base of Kyukaki, so he's going to be scouting out what Kyukaki is doing. Nothing really special though. Just getting this robotic facility. And that's it. So if we take a look at the at the basis of these two players, we will see a pretty much identical build, and uh, yeah, the same number of warp gates, one robotic facility, and that's pretty much it. So um, I have to just wait and see what they're both thinking because they're both going to probably transition into something. But there we go. Looks like both of them are going for an immortal. So. Um, I don't think this is gonna really come down to the unit composition so much in this game. Whoever, I mean, who wins this game, I think it's most mo most likely going to come down to who micros better, who engages better uh, with his units and stuff. So we'll just have to see. But uh, looks like here we go a turn in the tech tree of these players. Night End is getting a robotics bay right now, so we're gonna see Colossus while um, Kiwikaki is getting an observer after he got the immortal. So he's gonna be late with scouting this uh, this robotics bay. So let's see if these Colossus are going to make a difference in this game. The thing is, if you don't um, if you don't scout these out, Colossus can make a huge difference against Stalkers, especially if Stalkers don't have Blink. Because when Stalkers have Blink, it's a little bit better to actually um, it's a lot easier to uh, to snipe the Colossus. You can just go in there, Blink, sacrifice a Stalker or two, but you deal with the Colossus, and that's it. Otherwise, that Colossus can stay alive for a very long time, and um, yeah, it's not uh, it's not really. Uh, Good for your army to have a Colossus uh, AOEing the hell out of your units for such a long time. Now, Kibikaki is moving his observer across. You, we could see him uh, also moving his um, his units along with his observer. He was doing that to uh, to scout any observer that was idling around on hold position in his base. You can't really see them. You can see them when they're moving. You can you can see that they're there, but uh, if they're on hold position, it's actually much harder to um, to notice them. So um, yeah, you want to have your forces there so you can snipe it out the second your observer scouts it out. Looks like both players have been going for an expansion. Uh, Kiwikaki a little bit earlier than Night End, but Night End, do keep in mind that Night End has been going for a robotics bay. He's getting, he already has one Colossus out. He's getting Thermal Lance right now. He wants to really deny scouting, and I don't think Kiwikaki knows. No, he does not know about this structure over here. Um, and that's gonna be pretty important. And uh, these Colossus are gonna be quite important I think for this fight he also has a lot of zealots um, over here so Kikaki will lose these zealots as uh, Colossus do so much so much damage to to zealots and the stalkers are not gonna be um, are not gonna be a problem either I think he doesn't have blink and here we go Kikaki has gotten a uh, a robotic spay of his own and is getting thermal lance right now but it's quite delayed compared to night ends um, thermal lance and Night End is sitting on two Colossus right now, and all these Stalkers and Zealots, so um, no upgrades for the Stalkers or the Zealots is in no weapon upgrades, there's not even a Forge up, no, indeed, and um, also no uh, Charge or, or a Blink, nothing really out for any of these players, no Twilight Council anywhere. So let's see, looks like Night End is going to be moving across, he's going to take down the rocks, or will he take the, the long run, the long route, I mean, <clears throat> doesn't seem like it, he... He uh, knows that there is a, uh, a unit over here, and um, he scouted that with the observer, so he doesn't want to see. He doesn't want to let uh, to let Kiwikaki know that he's pushing across right now. There we go. The first set of rocks is going down. He's gonna probably be taking the second one as well. 
As for Kiyukaki, he's getting his first Colossus out right now, but um, wow, Knight and really sitting at a superior, uh, with a superior army count right now, three Colossus, and that's a lot of Zealots and a lot of Stalkers, so let's see how this is gonna play out. Does Kiyukaki even know about this? Obviously he knows that this the rocks are going down, but he doesn't really know that there's three Colossus, I think, and Knight and seems to be backing off, no? He's gonna try engaging again, but there's force fields. He needs to be careful about those force fields. There we go, two Colossus out over there. He does have the superior Colossus count, so Zealot's getting melted really, really fast. Stalkers are staying alive, doing a lot of damage. There we go, more damage. Uh, more Zealots coming through the cracks over here. Some Zealots are stuck behind. He needs to be careful and micro those. There we go, his Colossus doing a lot of damage to those Stalkers and the Immortal. He needs to be very careful, though, uh, because uh, Kiwikaki is gonna do a lot of damage with his own Colossus, so... I gotta take care of that. He did take down a lot of units right now. He might just go for the natural, but I don't think he wants to box himself in over here. So let's see what Naiden is going to be choosing. Is he go for? Is he gonna go for the main or the natural? More zealots coming in to reinforce, but um, <clears throat> I don't think really zealots are uh, the unit he needs right now. Three colossus up for Kiwikaki, four for Naiden right now, and um, let's see. Will the colossus count make the difference in the engagement over here? Kiwikaki still waiting right now. And there we go, they both have extended thermal lands. Night End is walking up into, into his base, and the units are kind of cramming themselves a little bit here. Night End doing a good job. Also some, some Zealots coming in from that side. Um, Night End keeping his Colossus alive. There we go, melting most of those Zealots. And the fifth Colossus joins the fight, and it's already five Colossus to three. And this is really, really huge. Also four Colossus right now out for Kikaki. So this is looking like War of the Worlds right now. Lots of Colossus out on the map. One Colossus did go down though. So three Colossus only remaining for Kiwikaki. And these Colossus are going down so fast. Uh, probes are getting literally melted over here. And let's see. These probes are all going to go down really, really fast, I believe. There we go. Uh, and this is really not good for Kiwikaki. Take a look, a look at the income tab. 29 probes only for Kiwikaki compared to 40 of Night and, and Night and might just go for this natural expansion over here and clean out the probes. And if he does, I think it's pretty much GG from Kiwikaki. Kiwikaki also <clears throat> laid down two additional gateways as for Night and I think he's going to do the same. No, a Twilight Council is on the way. That's really good. Um, you want to get some upgrades up for those stalkers, especially so you can uh, just blink in there and snipe the enemy Colossus. And as long as you do that, your Colossus will seriously just um, deliver the damage and deal the killing blow and uh, win you the game. So. As long as these Colossus live, Kiwikaki does have somewhat of a chance, but uh, if the Colossus count continues to increase like this for Knight, and he already has five right now, is he getting more? Yes, he is, so um, that's a lot of... Yep, there we go. Six Colossus right now. This is a lot of Colossus. And uh, double the number of Colossus, actually, that Kiwikaki has. So let's see how this is going to play out. Is Kiwikaki actually going to go for a counterattack, or... Will he come back and defend? Actually, if he doesn't come back to defend, um, it's he will lose all these uh, all these structures. There we go. He is coming back over here. But let's see how much damage Knight End can deal. Oh, and this is gonna get oh gets taken out before that Colossus makes it and uh, makes it out of there. And uh, wow, Knight End just has so many Colossus right now. The number of Colossus has really grown. So GG from Kikaki. Wow, and a really good player losing to Knight End in these. Uh, in this quarterfinals, so um, really solid play from Night End. Good timings, uh, good build orders, very, uh, very self-aware, and um, did just did the I don't know the number of Colossus just made such a huge difference. I mean, he had one or two extra Colossus at the start, and it made such a huge, huge difference uh, getting that robotics bay down faster. And um, yeah, so. Also in the start, defending the 4 gate push was really good, took out the pylons as well, uh, good micro from him, didn't really let Kiwikaki get any adv any unit advantage, um, both of them really sitting on one base for a long time, uh, pretty solid play, that's some something you do when you're not really sure, uh, obviously expanding in a game like this is a little bit risky because you never know what can happen because there's a lot of... Um, uh, warp gates can always uh, be aggressive, so uh, if you expose yourself to something like that and you lose your expansion, you're gonna be really, really far behind. So, both players really preferring to stay on one base for a long time. And um, yeah, looks like um, Night End is taking game number one, so we're gonna be going to game number two. It's the best of three, actually. So, I'll see you guys in game two.